moments that we call the creative block, where we have no ideas for what to draw, paint, or make. This happens to our students as well, and in every lesson that we teach, there's bound to be a child that sits and stares and thinks and doesn't get going on their work for a very long time because they don't have an idea. These are my suggestions to you for helping your students overcome their creative block. Make sure your students know that it's okay to make a mistake and that you do not want to see that all art pieces look the same. Let them know that this is a safe classroom to make art in and that no one needs to compare their art to the art of others. Let them know that you do expect them to try um, and through trying and making mistakes they will learn and, be get, and get better. Let them know that even famous and professional artists make mistakes and they also learn every single day because of course we're all lifelong learners. Um, and it is okay that they have never done art before. And I really stress that you really tell students that it is okay that you have never done or created art seriously before because we all have a different um, background of interests. I usually compare myself like I don't practice soccer all the time and therefore I'm not the greatest at soccer yet because if I do practice um, soccer I will get better and that is the same for any skill including art. Doesn't matter where your starting point is as long as you come to class, you sit, you try, yes you make mistakes and that's okay and every day you'll get a little bit better but you'll never get better if you don't try. Every skill takes time to grow. Every single skill. So, um, the kids need to know this. So remember that art is about the process and not always the product. Don't freak out. The creative process is a huge focus in creating art. And that be sa being said, um, the end product should be quality as well, but at the individual student level. Okay. Um, so like even um, real artists, they spend a lot of their time in their studios experimenting and um, making mistakes, quite frankly. And that's how a lot of art processes and techniques are born is through experimenting and making mistakes. Um, all art movements, right? So, um, so in the studio, uh, the uh, real artists, the professional artists, they also um, work through their sketchbooks, they think of their ideas visually, um, they plan, they work out their ideas, they make their mistakes, and then after many failed art pieces, they, um, and good ones, then they select the ones they will show in a gallery. So even in my own art practice, because I do show my own art in galleries outside of this, um, and teaching, uh, I mean, only some of them ever get to go into the galleries and even me and other professional artists, we just, you know, store or destroy um, some of our artworks. And in the ceramic world, that's called the seconds pile <laughs> or the boneyard where we don't want people to acquire them, right? So, and of course, I appreciate that the pieces that um, don't make the shows, I appreciate them just as much the pieces that do make the shows um, into the galleries because they allowed me to experiment and they allowed me to learn through the creative process just as much as the piece that made it into the gallery to begin with. And this is important to know because it's the same for your kids, right? Not every art piece is um, going to make it to the gallery show and they have a huge journey ahead of them. So we just want to encourage them to be creative and love art. And that is going to allow them to feel comfortable to create in your classroom. Students will struggle with ideas if they cannot make a connection to the art project or the concept or the theme that you're working with. We cannot expect students to love every aspect of art as much as us. I know that's hard, but it's true, right? Um, not everyone will love art as much as us, the art teachers. <laughs> it is unreasonable to expect them to love everything. 
that we you know ask them to do but it is reasonable that we ask them to try new things to help them learn and grow. And it's imperative that we engage students with lessons that are relevant to them. We need, yes, sorry, yes, we do need to teach like art history and all the skills and techniques, the elements and the principles. Um, pick an art movement that you think that is interesting to them, such as Surrealism and pop art is, you know, exceptionally interesting to them because it's more contemporary or, you know, closer to our time in our history and still is going on. Right now we have even like lowbrow um, art that has been born from that and pop surrealism that has also been born from that too. Um, so, for example, minimalism, as though it may be interesting to you and me, may be a hard uh, sell to kids and of course it would be a better topic for university students. So pick artists that do work that is relevant to them um, as well as to the as well pick work that they're creating that is also relevant to the kids okay so and then think of what can be altered or add to historical work that might perk their interest okay so if, say you take a van Gogh you're studying van Gogh, van Gogh what could you alter or um, in the historical work, if you're trying to recreate it, what could you alter or add to it to make it current? Or what could you do to that? You can even pose that question to the whole class. What can we do to make this contemporary or relevant to our day and age? Um, and then they might add in things that interest them. Okay, maybe the, the moon turns into a giant emoji, for example. I don't know. Um, so can we merge pop culture symbols into a Van Gogh painting and what would that look like? Students need to have a connection to the topic or theme of the art project and it needs to be relevant to their world. And this will allow them to form ideas more easily. You can also have them walk until their ideas form. So you can ask them to stand, you turn off the lights, they put their hands behind their backs, and then you're going to model as you walk without talking. And then you put on your thinking face and you walk. And then you ask your kids, what am I doing? What am I doing right now? What does it look like? What does it sound like? What do you notice about what I'm doing right now? And then they can say, well, you're walking quietly. You're not talking. You're not looking at your friends. Um, you're just walking slowly through the classroom and you're looking around and I can see that you're thinking because you have your thinking art face on. Okay, so you can demo this and then you can say, okay, now it's your turn. Quietly push in your chairs and then you gotta Bring down the volume and the mood so it's tranquil in the dim lights or dark. Um, they walk, they stand, they put their hands behind their backs and they walk through the classroom. Now when they have their idea, that's the moment that they go back to their desk and they sit down and they can start drawing. And they can go back to their tables or desks at any time that they have their ideas. So then sometimes you'll have kids go back rather quickly and then others will trickle in, you know, in a middle rush. And then there'll be the odd few who are really taking their time, walking to look for their ideas and just let them do it. That's fine. And then they'll go back. Now, if you feel like that, you might, you're not trusting them to go back. You could put on a timer for like 10, 15 minutes so that no matter what, they have to go back when the timer's up. I let them go, but we all have different kinds of classrooms. So you do what's comfortable for you. You can also let them doodle a brainstorm to music to help the ideas come out. So you can create a mindful atmosphere. You can find calm music on Spotify or YouTube. You can search Zen music call music, relaxing music, Hawaiian music with some ukulele. Um, you can search up cafe or coffee shop music, put that on. Usually those playlists are like an hour. Um, and then you can turn off some of your lights or all if you have some lamps and then you can let them doodle away and then they can try and visually 
think out their ideas because some people think with pictures like myself and probably most artists. A lot of people don't think with just words. Now, that being said, if thinking with words is easier for them, they should write out their ideas, whatever works for their brain and their mind, okay? So it always should be for the individual students. So let them think it out and then have lots of ideas on their page and then they should circle their favorite few. And from there they can funnel their ideas down to the one they want. You can also do a think pair share as a class and come up with many possibilities and um, they can uh, choose from there. So. You can uh, first ask them to think on their own. You could put on a timer for a minute or, two, minute or two, ask them to close their eyes or get into a restful, relaxing position that they feel like they can think best in. And then um, you might wanna turn down the lights. I'm a big fan of natural light. If you haven't noticed by this video, I often just have lamps on. Yeah, I don't like fluorescent lights. Um, so we turn down the lights and then we ask them um, after the minute or two to share their ideas, not with the group, but just to the person beside them. So this is the pair part. So now students, you may open your eyes and we'd like you to turn to someone beside you. Just one person, make a quick look at them. If you are missing a person at your table, in my room I have tables, so if there's just three, you can talk as a three, or if you're just a lonesome wolf at a table, go quietly tiptoe and find someone to talk to. Now I would like you to think together, use two brains, and you guys have two minutes to share to your buddy. You may go. So now they're gonna quietly, um, either sometimes people say like, uh, finger width apart, like so the person should be able to hear you in this kind of voice. So talking just enough that the other person can hear you, or I call it shoulder to shoulder talking. So I don't need to use my loud voice. I only need to use a voice that the person beside me can hear. Okay, so um, we don't want shouting, shouting people, duh. So ask them to talk to the person beside them and share their ideas. Now, after everybody shared to their partner, now, if somebody didn't have an idea, now they have their partner's ideas, so they have something to think about, or the other person has lots of ideas if they both had ideas, okay? So now we share to the whole classroom, and the whole classroom's going to share their ideas quietly, and you're going to record all the ideas on the whiteboard, so that way everyone can see everyone's ideas and have also listened to them. So that way even the kids who had no ideas at all, now they have ideas to work with. And it's visual, so even if they forget or they have um, if it's processing information is either delayed or hard for them, because that's often part of, that also often could be a problem for some kids. It's the processing or the delayed thinking. Now they can see the ideas on the board, then write it down. And then if they forget the ideas on the board and they can write it down. And then if you um, don't, if you're somebody who like, thinking of an idea is hard, there's lots of ideas in front of you to pick your favorite. Okay, so that way we all feel successful. Another thing you could do is show students examples of student work from the past, um, your own art example, or you could show historical or contemporary artworks produced by professional artists to give them some inspiration. You could give visuals posted around the room, so you could post a whole bunch of different pictures that you printed, possibly laminated so it lasts forever, and then they can um, walk around the room to get ideas, or if you don't want to do that, you can just put all the pictures onto a slideshow and just have it on a rotation slideshow in your classroom so they can just see things moving past them as their ideas are forming. You can also um, let them use a graphic organizers. Um, sometimes graphic organizers help us funnel our ideas um, and that is very useful. So I have created a graphic organizer for you guys just for this um, whole idea video um, and that will allow kids to record lots of ideas and then they have to funnel it a little bit and then pick 
some ideas and have just a few ideas and then funnel it further until they just have the idea they're going to work with for that art project, okay? So we're gonna squeeze out, have lots of ideas and funnel it or squeeze it into the main idea, okay? So um, it's forcing the perfect idea to come on out and then it's also a, a record of our thinking process. So. If you would like to have that graphic organizer, make sure you head down on into the comment section below the video, and then that will take you to a link to where you can download the resource for free. Try putting some key, uh, keywords on, so on the board, or you can print them onto eight and a half by 11 paper, nice and big, and then post that around your classroom. And then students could walk around when they are lacking of idea and look at words and see if those words trigger any ideas or thoughts. This is good maybe for kids who are stuck in the creative process so they can walk, let their bodies relax a bit. Maybe the movement will help them trigger an idea. And as they, they walk, they look at the words and hopefully that trigger will happen. While they're planning, you can also try putting up a timer and then kids can brainstorm words or images, so drawings, um, as the timer goes. And um, they can do this until the timer goes off. They need to use the entire time that the timer is on to write or draw as many ideas as possible. And then when the timer goes off, that is a signal that they have to pick one of the ideas to do. The timer forces students to get their work done and eliminates the opportunity of procrastination. That, but it still allows them time to think before they do. So don't like make it three minutes. That's a lot. That's like way too little. Definitely I'm thinking like five to 10 minutes, okay? And more in that range because we do want to be fair and allow them time to think and process the information that they have learned. So um, of course, continue to allow them to edit their ideas and work through it or give them artist choice whenever possible, even during the process. So they don't feel any restriction um, and can make the art piece meaningful to themselves. The more that they can connect to their own artwork, the more they will want to do it. The timer creates more of a challenge for the students and creates a game show type vibe where they feel that they must just do and not be thinking um, and not be like really restricted. They just have to get it done before the timer's up. So it's just kind of like go, go, go versus, oh, I have all the time in the world. Go, get it done, timer, boom. Another suggestion is to work one-on-one um, -on -one with students that are struggling um, for whatever reason. Maybe it's uh, processing information that's um, difficult for them uh, or they just are not used to thinking in a creative way, which is possible. So you can either pull them one or two kids over to your table uh, or you can go and sit with them at a table. The goal will be to make them feel that it is safe to create and make a mistake and build a relationship with them as well, um, as this will help them work through the creative process and their art assignments. You'll be able to create, a, build a relationship and help them funnel their ideas and get them started on their art assignment. So um, by building that relationship, you're, you're creating a trust and then you're also reinforcing this safe classroom feel which is really important for some students. They need to know that it's safe to make a mistake. They need to know it's safe to trust you and that you do care about them and that you respect them. And they need to see that and feel that before they are ready to open themselves up and then create in your classroom. So try building a relationship with them. Um, like super important. Like take the time to build a relationship, especially with those strugglers sit with them, talk with them, they'll relax when you do that and they'll feel a lot more comfortable to want to create in your classroom. And then you'll also get to know a little bit about them, which will also inform some of your practice and the way you lesson plan later. So you can gear the projects again to their interests. Try out these ideas next time with uh, your new art lessons, work it into the planning stage um, and see if it helps spark more efficient and working students in your classroom who have ideas a little bit quicker. You can even use some of the strategies when you notice some of your students are stuck in the creative process and need a little bit more encouragement. I would love to know what you do to help kids get going when they're stuck in the creative block or if they don't have an idea, 
Please leave your comments or your response down in the comments section below the video and then that will also give you a chance to discuss with other art teachers as well as get a response from me and gives you a chance to be the comment star in my future videos uh, where I feature both uh, your name and your comment. Like this video, subscribe to my channel and click that bell to receive a notification when new episodes arrive. Um, for more art tutorials, head on over to my blog MsArtastic.com or check out my art teacher resources in my Teachers Pay Teachers store um, by searching up Ms. Artastic on TPT. For more behind the scenes footage and art ideas, please follow me on Instagram at Ms. Artastic. And of course, all these links are down below in my comment section. See you next time.